Hey, preschool kids and families, it's Mr. Matt, and we are so thankful that you're here. We miss y'all, and we love teaching you about God and what he's like and what he's done from the Bible. And since we can't be together right now, we thought it would be a lot of fun to bring some of Little Village to you. So every week, we're gonna practice our monthly memory verse, hear a story from the Bible, and worship God by singing together. This week, Miss Karis is gonna be teaching us about Moses. But first, let's practice our monthly memory verse together to remember what is good, true, and beautiful about God. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God Hi, little village kids. I have missed you. I have missed your smiling faces. I have missed your attentive eyes. I have missed hearing what you are loving and what you're excited about. And I am excited for us to be together again, hopefully soon. You are a very special part of God's church. Now, we've been going through true stories in the Bible. And before we go through this true story, I wanna tell you a few things about it. This story has hard parts, and this story has a hopeful parts. This story is from the Bible. The Bible is from God. It is about God, and it is true. Every word in it is true. The last true story you may have heard was about Joseph. Joseph had some brothers who were very angry. They were jealous. They were so jealous. They sold Joseph into slavery in Egypt, a land he'd never been to, and he must have been so scared. But God was good and he was with Joseph. God was so good to Joseph. In fact, Joseph was like a prince in Egypt. Joseph invited his brothers back to Egypt with him so they'd have enough food and have everything they need. And last week you learned about some of the very beginnings of God's family when God spoke with Abraham and made a big promise, a big promise to make his family bigger and bigger and they'd be God's special chosen people because the church is God's family. This week, we're gonna hear about how that family got bigger and bigger. They came to a land called Egypt. We're gonna hear about what happened to them in Egypt and how they prayed and God listened to and heard their prayers because God wants to talk with us. Now the Israelites, can you say Israelites? Let's try together, ready? On the count of three, say Israelites. One, two, three, Israelites. Good job. The Israelites were God's special and chosen people. He loved them very, very much. When they were in Egypt, God blessed them. They got bigger and bigger and bigger, and they got stronger and stronger. Can you pretend you're really strong? They got so strong. The bad thing about this is the king of Egypt, his name was Pharaoh. Can you say Pharaoh? Pharaoh, good, that's really good. He got scared. He got scared of how big the people had gotten. He made a really, really hard and bad plan. This is one of the hard parts of the story. His first plan was to take the Israelites and make them slaves. Slaves have to obey their masters. They are treated terribly. They get no money for the work that they do. 
This is not how God wants us to treat each other. This is not how God wanted his people to be treated. But this is what Pharaoh did to the Israelites. But guess what? Even though they were being hurt and oppressed, they continued to grow. They continued to get stronger. They continued to get bigger. Do you think this freaked Pharaoh out? Yes, he couldn't believe it. You guys, this is another hard part of the story. Pharaoh made an even more terrible plan. He told his people to take all the Israelite baby boys and throw them into the river. Throw them into the river so they would die. This is tragic. This is hard. And this is a very sad and scary time to be an Israelite. So they prayed and they prayed and they cried out to God. And guess what? God heard his people because God wants to talk with us. In fact, it says here in Exodus that God in Exodus 2, 24, God heard their groaning. In 25, it says, God saw the people of Israel. God knew, God knew the suffering of his people and he had a plan. There was an Israelite mommy and she gave birth to a little baby boy and she loved her baby boy so much. But she knew if Pharaoh found her baby boy, he would have him killed. So she hid her baby boy in a basket and she set that basket down the river. Oof. Can you imagine her heart watching her little baby go down that river? But God had a plan. Guess who was just down the river? The Egyptian princess. She was bathing in the river and she looks up and she sees a basket. The basket floats to her. She opens the basket and who does she see inside? This little baby crying and she felt sorry for the baby and she took care of it. She adopted it and she named that baby Moses. Have you heard of Moses? Moses grew up in the Egyptian palace and he knew he was an Israelite. He saw the Israelites being treated terribly and it made him angry. Can you make an angry face? It made him angry. It made him so angry one time that he killed an Egyptian for hurting an Israelite. That was wrong. He killed the Egyptian and then he ran away. He ran far away where no one could find him and find out what he did. He went all the way to Midian, and in Midian he became a shepherd. A shepherd takes care of sheep, and he did that for most of his life. And when he was older, one day he was taking care of his sheep, and he looked up and he saw a bush. The bush was on fire. Now, what do you do with a bush that's on fire? You don't touch it. But he saw that the bush inside, it wasn't burning. It wasn't burning up. So he got closer to look at it, and out of the fire came a voice. Who do you think that voice belonged to? It was God. God was speaking to Moses. Do you want to know what God said? Yeah, I bet you do. It says right here in Exodus 3, God said, I know of my people's suffering. I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Oh, God had a plan. God had a plan for his people. He had heard their cries and he was going to answer their prayers. And Moses, he was so amazed by this. He bowed down, he took off his sandals to honor God. And God said, I'm going to send you. Do you think Moses was terrified to go back to Egypt? The place where he'd killed the man, the place he'd grown up and go face Pharaoh and say, let God's people go? Yes, he was very scared, but guess what God told him? In Exodus 3, we say, God says, come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel out of Egypt, but I will be with you. I will be with you. God went with Moses, even in some of the hardest parts of the story. Man, God sent a deliverer and a rescuer to rescue his people out of slavery, to rescue his people out of oppression. Moses obeyed God. Moses went back to Egypt to rescue his people, to be part of God's special rescue plan. Isn't that awesome? This is a true story from God's word and it reminds us of the true story of how God has come to rescue us, how he came to rescue us and that God hears our prayers. God wants to talk with us. God wants to hear about what you're thinking about, what you're scared about, what you're excited about. And I want you to use your brain and think back with me to a little bit in the story where the people were slaves in Egypt. You know what's interesting is that our sinful hearts that we were born with can sometimes be like masters over us and we can be slaves to our sinful hearts. This is not what God wants for his people. So God had a rescue plan for us. God sent Jesus to be our rescuer, to deliver us from our sick and sinful hearts. He lived the perfect life we should have lived. He died the death 
we should have died so that we could be rescued from our sinful broken hearts and be with God forever in heaven. Great news, the best news, because being with God is the best. It's better than going to your grandma's house. It's better than watching Paw Patrol. It's better than Disney World. God is the best thing for us and he has made a way for us to be with him. He has made a way for us to talk with him while we're here on earth and God wants to talk with us. So friends, let's say that together. This is a huge gospel truth. I want us to get into our brains, into our hearts. So let's say it together. First time, let's say it like a whisper. On the count of three, God wants to talk with us. Are you ready? Okay, one, two, three. God wants to talk with us. That was great and super quiet. So let's try again, but let's time, let's uh, pretend we're underwater. Use your finger like this. Okay, okay, ready? One, two, three. God wants That was pretty good. It kind of sounded like we were in a room of ocean. Okay, this last one, if it's okay with your parents, we're gonna go really loud. We're gonna be excited and hopeful because this is hopeful. This is great news. So if it's okay with your parents, no one's napping. Let's do this together. Ready? One, two, three. God wants to talk with us. Best news. So much good news in today's story. Guys, thank you for listening and going through the story together with me. Let's pray. Let's talk to the God who wants to talk with us, okay? Can you put your hands together? Fold your fingers like this with me. Okay. God, thank you that you want to talk with us. Thank you for making a way for us to talk with you. Thank you that you listen to us. Thank you that you always answer. Thank you that you love us and set Jesus to save us from our sins. Near my praise. Amen.
speaking to us every moment, every day. He is talking. Are we listening? He wants to speak to us. Can we hear him? He is talking. Are we listening? He wants to speak to us. Can we hear him? We can see him in creation. Hear him in Thanks for watching everybody. For more information and for additional resources for both kids and parents, check out our TVC Kids site located on the homepage of thevillagechurch.net.